Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to The Pulse. We are coming to you live from our studios in Koko Mlemle on our digital terrestrial TV because we're free to wear on DSTV channel 41 and Go TV channel 144. Remember, we are your home of independent, fearless and credible journalism. This afternoon, city authorities in Accra launched new sanitation bylaws which could land offenders at least six months in jail. We'll tell you what the code name Operation Clean Your Frontage is all about right here, right now on The Pulse. We want to use this as a punishment for everybody to know that if we get you, you'll do the work on your own. He should look for his own gloves to come and clean the place. Also this afternoon, more than 1,000 people affected by recent floods in the Shanti region this week and have been identified to have suffered some form of damage during the floods. We'll take you live to some affected communities at NADMO makes assessment of those areas. I can hear scream from the other side of the road. Those who saw the Awaka going, telling us, oh, they are dead, they are dead, they are already dead. Plus three Ghanaian celebrities behind bars in less than a week. The latest to face the law is rapper medical known in private life Samuel Edu Frimpong, who has been remanded in police custody for five days for brandishing a gun on social media. We have the latest for you in showbiz. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. The Pulse is brought to you by Global Communities, Dignilu, Affordable, Safe Sanitation. We're also streaming live on YouTube and all our social media handles at Joy News on TV. Tweet at us with the hashtag The Pulse. My personal handle is at Danana Aisha. I'm super excited to host you. Hello, my name is Nathaniel Atta. You can catch up with all the fun and inspiration on the Joy Sports link here on Joy 99.7 FM together with all other shows over and over again. It's very simple. All you need to do is go to myjoyonline.com slash podcast and relive all of those fun moments over and over again. Joy 99.7 FM, your radio for the sermon listener. This afternoon, you could be facing at least six months in prison if you're found to have breached sanitation bylaws in Accra. All 29 district assemblies in the Great Accra region have passed the Operation Clean Your Frontage bylaws, which others owners of buildings to be responsible for cleaning their frontage. This afternoon, President Ekofuado has commissioned a task force to enforce the bylaws under uh, the uh, under the law. Let's make. Accra work agenda being spearheaded by the regional minister Henry Corte. My colleague Manuel Cranting was there for us and has filed this report. So it's yet again another edition of the Joy Clean Ghana campaign. That partnership between the multimedia group, the Joy Brands of the multimedia group, and the Accra Metropolitan Assembly. Well, today we are here at the Kwame Nkrumah Interchange. And of course, Mr. Joseph Asetanga is head environmental unit, the Accra Metropolitan Assembly. is going to run us through what we're here to do. And of course, um, the impact of the uh, campaign is available for you to see on all our social media platforms, of course, on YouTube and everywhere you go on Join News uh, on TV. Mr. Asetanga, grateful that you could speak to us this morning. And um, congratulations. It seems and the work we've been doing so far um, is resonating with a lot of people. We're getting calls. Um, for the team to visit other parts of the country. Yeah, thank you. Good morning. And good morning to your listeners. Um, it's a, a good call that uh, Ghanaians are realizing that sanitation <laughs> is part of their daily life and whatever they undertake in a day. So now we also, I mean, appreciate the good work that uh, Joy, Joy News, for that matter, Clean Ghana, is undertaking in all the assemblies, if you are able to extend it to. Because this is a wake-up call. The president is committed to the cleanliness of the country. And once the president himself is committed to the cleanliness of the country, it's left to the responsibility of we, the citizens, to take up our responsibility to clean the immediate surroundings that we find ourselves in our daily activities. Because the moment you generate waste, you should be responsible for the collection of your waste. Once you generate the waste, you are culpable to handle that waste until it's disposed of safely. And today's activity that we are taking today, we're going to tackle the 
the, 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 the under bridge, under the bridge. A lot of the squatters, the junkies who are hanging around littering and urinating indiscriminately within the circle of uh, mint and cliff here. Today we're going to tackle all junkies that anybody will find him under the bridge without any reason for you to find yourself there. The bridge under the bridge is not a place of abort for anybody. So we get you, we put you onto the ground, you will sweep and today we're going to make sure that we put them to a serious task and they will sweep and make sure we clean the bridge up to the end of wherever the, the length of the bridge is. So we are going in and we're going to effect arrest. Anybody found under the bridge, we are putting the person to job. And then after that what? After that, what we do is that we'll continue because today is a, a day we're starting this exercise. It's not going to end today. As we are moving, we're going to move along with receptacles that when they sweep, they'll put the refuse in and then we'll ensure that it gets to the right disposal site. And this is going to continue. We want to repeat it and consistently repeat what we're doing. After here, we may be looking at the central business center. We'll go there, we'll get there and also employ the same strategy we are doing because all the traders who litter the soldiers of the road and have occupied the soldiers of the road, making it impossible for pedestrians to move. We'll get there, when we get you, we'll put you to work. No matter whatever activity you are doing there, you'll be made to work. After the work, you can come and continue what you are doing. After the work, you can come and continue what you're doing. So that's, uh, you know, the agenda for today. We're hitting the underbridge, right under the uh, bridges of the Kwame Nkrumah interchange. And like, as he said, the junkies are um, the target. So today, junkies in trouble. You want to come with us as we set off for today's edition of um, the Joy Clean Ghana campaign. In the first place, um, this morning, as part of our exercise this morning, hey, 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 stop, no argument here. Yes, I'm coming. Today, as part of the exercise this morning, stand up, all of you should stand up, those have arrested this morning, let them all stand up. All of you should stand up. All, as part of the exercise this morning, when we got to circle here, these guys here, this particular people, a lot of them, they have their belongings under the bridge. They use there as their rooms, they pack their belongings there. They do their changing, whatever they do, as a transit place for them to change and, and move. And they urinate. Every part of the bridge is full of urine. We're going to ensure that they clean the bridge under. And any other person found under the bridge will be part of the cleaning. So we're going to put them to job and they are going to work until we are satisfied. Okay, so where, where, I want to find out, where, where are you coming from? Where, where are you from? Yeah, I come from Stekobet, I did Asante Achim, South Champo. Okay. And, and how did you get to Accra? Uh, I, I did do Kayayo work, and uh, sometimes I did wash VIP bus. Uh, yeah. So uh, why why you the, you the bed under the, under the, the bridge? You know? It's, it's, yeah. They sleep there, the bridge under. Yes, yes. Why? Why? Because I don't get money. If I get money, I, I go do some uh, a distance, some war and or like self contain Me and my people sleep that place. Uh, but you know get. But uh, yes, yes. That's why they sleep the bridge under. Yes, yes. So you know, you know the heads. You, you know the fear. Say something will happen to cargo. Fear knock you. Me, my mind it be white mind, like like you. No get bad things in my mind. But that why I feel sleep that place. But you, you tell me. You know, I I feel do some carefree my for myself and my people. So if it gets if it gets another place, you go you go sleep. Yes, 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 man. See, but yes. okay. the point is, the place is not for you. It's not meant for you to be sleeping there. Now the second thing is that you are not making the place neat. Where you are sleeping, it's very insanitary. You urinate there. You throw when you eat. You throw the the rubbish everything in that place. Hmm. I think that uh, uh, on the uh, where are you? China, bring the brooms. Untie the brooms quickly for us. We are putting them on the job. Take your broom. Everybody should take his her broom. Have it. So ask them individually. Hello. Why is that? Can I make a blow? That one. They are selling their properties. What's your name? Abu Abu Bakar. Abu Bakar. What What do you do? 
It is a medicine. What medicine? Uh, manpower. Manpower. What manpower? Uh, let, me see, let me see. Let me see your medicine. Uh, it is. Uh, let me hold for you. Where, where is the medicine? Remove the medicine. Let's see. That's what you sell, aphrodisia. Oh, these are aphrodisia? Yeah, fire for fire. Mm -hmm. Why do they sell these things? Do they work? The way man. Do they work? Yeah. Do you know you they use some? Mm, they use some. You they use? Mm. So who approves, say, make you sell these drugs? Me. Yeah. Where do you get it? Akara. Who? Me. Eh. Uh, Niger. Then oh. approve for Niger. Mm. So you bring them from Niger to Ghana. Mm. Where you know you they sell? Mm. But what, what you do with them arrest you? What did you do? I was urinating at an unauthorized place. You, you, are, you are urinating outside? Is that what you do in Niger? Okay, so if you, you know that if you are in town, you must go to where there is a urinal. You have to say urinal. I call urin and I bowl. You say I could do something like bowl. I don't understand. So, could you do that? And so now. You are seeing them, all the folks who were earlier arrested are being put to work. So you can see them with brooms as have been uh, given out by the officers of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly. Now what they're doing is sweeping and tidying up the area. And just like uh, Mr. Asitanga said earlier, this is going to be the strategy that the assembly will be using um, to make sure that the city is clean. And you remember that um, already the Greater Accra Regional Minister Henry Corte is on an agenda um, to get all district assemblies within the region to um, ratify and pass the operation Clean Your Frontage Bylaws. Now, these bylaws essentially will get um, all producers of um, waste to clean their frontage to so every company. Every household that generates waste will be responsible um, for the cleanliness of the space right in front um, of their buildings. We don't have gloves, so you have to get rubber to put into your house for them. Yeah, you you were united outside, whom were you expected to come and clean? They are asking for gloves. They were urinating outside. Anywhere at all, they were dumping the thing. Whom were they expecting to come and collect? They should collect their own field. But, but, but Mr. Asanga, does uh, you know, do two wrongs make a right? Does it make the right because we want to use this as a punishment for everybody to know that if we get you, you will do the work on your own. He should look for his own gloves to come and clean the place. Okay. Yeah, because we have relaxed so much with our bylaws. And because we've relaxed on our bylaws, People think they can take the laws into their own house to do what is they think is right for them. Uh, uh, Mr. Tanga, we know that the regional minister record has been pushing for the um, the passage of the operation clean your frontage uh, bylaws. I mean, I see shops, I see restaurants, I see um, you know bus terminals and so on. Are they not the ones supposed to be cleaning their frontage? All shops, all uh, restaurant frontages, they are responsible for cleaning their frontages, as well as bus stops. They are also responsible. Now, we got here this morning. What we, the strategy we adapted is, we came to stay around to observe, to see those who are littering. So when we stayed, we realized that even the drivers themselves, when they come, they sweep and collect their refuse and keep it tightly before they dispose it up. But the people around, they cause the mess. They drink the sachet, they throw it anywhere. They stand any place, they, they pee pee. And that is why we are taking those people to be responsible for what they are doing. Even though they are not the, the, the total authors of the refuse that we see here. That we will use them and anybody who will see them working will know that he's also culpable and when we get him, he will also work. We can now speak with my colleague Manuel Cranting who is on this beat for us. Manuel, uh, I'm aware the president is the one commissioning these bylaws. Has that event happened? Manuel? Well, Aisha, that event is currently underway uh, in the background. Um, as you can see, um, what we know is that the president is only going to launch this particular initiative, which has been in the workings for um, quite a while. At least we know that since sometime um, in March, when uh, the president, of course, announced the 
um, appointees. Uh, it's, it's been in the workings. The Honorable Henry Corte, who is the regional minister for uh, the Greater Accra region, has been on and about um, what he calls Let's Make Accra Work Agenda. Well, now in that particular agenda is where we're going to um, have this particular operation. They call um, Operation Clean Your Frontage. Now, um, before now, of course, the Accra Metropolitan Assembly had this particular bylaw. Now, what we know is that it's been adopted and ratified in all 29 district assemblies in the Greater Accra region. And indeed, under this particular uh, bylaw, um, three category of home, of like um, building ownership um, in this country, uh, well, in, the, in the region, by uh, of course, um, uh, to emphasize. Uh, are going to be uh, taxed with the responsibility of cleaning their frontage. So uh, residential buildings are going to, uh, owners of residential buildings and even those who just occupy the buildings are supposed to um, you know, clean their frontage. And then, of course, we have industrial and commercial um, buildings. They are also expected to clean their frontage. And then we have what we call the uh, private and then public office spaces. Now, the occupants and the owners, or all the owners um, of these particular offices are also um, taxed with the responsibility of cleaning their frontage. So essentially, with every piece of land that is occupied within the greater Accra region, the occupants in that particular space are now having a responsibility to ensure the, you know, the, the, the hygiene and cleanliness of that particular space. And the bylaw comes with uh, some punishments, really stuff, uh, you know, uh, really stiff punishments. It mentions that um, offenders of the bylaw are liable to a summary uh, conviction of a fine, really, um, of between 100 and 250 penalty units or to a six months uh, term in jail or up to one year at, or the combination of the fine and the jail term. Um, so it's not just the punishments that we are having under um, this particular uh, bylaw. What we know also is that the city authorities um, in this instance are having a responsibility to take over the responsibility that has been given and now to the occupants and the owners of the buildings if they default. So the city authorities will clean if you default, but they will surcharge you and also report you. So after being surcharged um, on the cost of uh, cleaning the, the frontage, you also uh, be reported, you'll be arraigned before, uh, of course, uh, court and then also uh, punishment will be meted out to you. So this seems um, like a comprehensive uh, approach to dealing um, with the uh, uh, sanitation issue, especially within the Greater Accra region. As we had um, the president in his first term, and by extension also in his second term, uh, speak uh, quite instructively about making Accra the cleanest city in Africa. This particular um, operation an agenda is expected to um, facilitate the achievement of that particular goal of making um, Accra the cleanest city um, in Africa. So Aisha, um, the launch is currently um, underway. What we know is also that the president uh, will be commissioning um, a tax force that will be mandated to enforce the bylaw. And so the tax force, as we had in uh, the times past, as you call the town council, this is being introduced uh, in quite uh, you know, a new fashion. This tax force will be enforcing the bylaws and making sure that they crack the whip on people um, who uh, flout the, 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 the bylaws. So generally, um, that is what we are expecting the president to launch um, this afternoon as the uh, agenda takes effect and full force right from now, Aisha. But as the greater Accra regional minister himself been saying about this whole thing, Well, he's yet to speak um, this afternoon, but what we know is that he um, has been, uh, I, I may just say that indeed, um, as we are speaking, uh, we're hearing that he'll be, he'll be addressing the gathering pretty shortly. But ahead of this particular event, we've seen the Greater Accra Regional Minister sort of galvanize support uh, for the agenda of uh, Make Accra uh, Work. Now, he actually 
uh, has been speaking uh, to the various district assemblies and asking them to pass uh, the bylaws and uh, ratify it. We saw that coming into uh, uh, becoming a reality, of course, some three weeks ago when um, all 29 um, district assemblies within the Greater Accra region indeed passed and ratified the operation uh, Clean Your Frontage bylaws. And so th th that's what we know. Um, he's been quite instrumental in getting um, this particular uh, bylaw passed. And in general, the let's make a crowd work agenda. We know he's been uh, speaking to both sides um, of, of, of the uh, Greater Accra Caucus in Parliament. Uh, he spoke to the minority side and indeed uh, the majority side of the Greater Accra Caucus. And they have um, pledged their support. Uh, we know also that he's been uh, seeking the support of um, former ministers of the region and also former mayors of, the, uh, of, of Accra. And all of them um, have largely, quite publicly, expressed their support for the Let's Make Accra Great um, agenda. And so, indeed, having done all of those, it is expected that as the president about to launch this, it will take uh, you know, effect in full force. And then, of course, uh, the uh, fruits will be seen um, across uh, the region as uh, the commission, the uh, tax force. And so, Aisha, he's here to speak, but um, he's, he's spoken quite extensively already about um, this particular agenda, Aisha. It's a man for us at this event. And of course, if you're planning to actually flout uh, the rules and make your frontage dirty, then you know what is coming and how long you could be fined uh, if this law is actually launched this afternoon. Let's stay in a cry a while longer because would you, and I asked the question, would you have the name of the Greater Accra region changed to Ga Adangme region? That's the proposal by the Gamancheni, Takite Kochiru II. He was speaking during a tour of the region by President Ekufuad as part of his regional working visit. Presidential correspondent Elton Broby was with the president when the suggestion was uh, made well we'll be speaking to him but you can also have your say on this issue you go on twitter and look for a joy news on tv that's our twitter handle and a vote uh, remember to add the hashtag the polls and so uh, that is a greater Accra or Gandangba region that's the question and then vote there let's speak with my colleague Elton uh, Broby who joins us now for more on this one Elton did the government give any reason for this proposal well Aisha he said that uh, first they want to identify more of the region I think they, he is of the view that an indigenous name uh, can best suit uh, the Gadango people uh, for that region. If the proposal is accepted, the Zetaka region to be renamed the Gadango region. Secondly, he is of the view that uh, the study of Ghana uh, in most of our first and second package institutions uh, is dwindling. Is, is, is uh, and then for that region, government should encourage the studying of camp in our first and second cycle institutions. And then also there should be the training of more teachers to teach the subject. But on the matter of the region uh, going through a renaming exercise, he told the president that that is the decision uh, or that is what the Grand Traditional Council has come to. But because uh, these matters can best be handled by the political head, uh, he prayed President Akufuado, to uh, give it a thought and then get back to them the feasibility of that exercise taking place because they are of the view that a renaming of the region from Greater Accra to Gadangwe uh, will best you know, align with uh, the indigenous of the Greater Accra region. Now, the response from President Akufuado was that uh, it is his responsibility as a head of state to undertake such an exercise. The proposal having come from the chiefs, will be given the necessary attention both of both as cabinet and at the governance level to look at whether or not it is possible to have it done. So we didn't get a yes or a no answer from the proposal. What you got was that to look into it and then come to a conclusion as to whether there is merit in the proposal or not, Aisha.
Alton Brobe is our man following the precedent uh, for us on the Ga'adangwe issue, whether uh, the Greater Accra region should be changed to Ga'adangwe region. And we still would have updates for you in our subsequent bulletin. But uh, we'll take a break on the post. Remember, you can join via our social media handles uh, on Joy News at at Joy News on TV and the Twitter handle is also hashtag uh, the polls and my personal handle is at the Nana Aisha. We will pull out that Twitter. Uh, we, we, we did a poll on what should be the name. Greater Accra Regional Garden Bay Region will pull out that tweet for you shortly. We'll take a break but when we also come back from the break we'll go straight to the Ashanti region where we are told that more than a thousand people have been affected by recent floods in and that region this week and have been identified uh, to have suffered some form of damage. Stay with us. Like I heard scream from the other side of the road, those who saw the Awakagui tell us, oh, they are dead, they are dead, they are already dead. What's up, guys? My name is Sammy Forsen, host of the Weekend City Show and Ignition right here on Joy 99.7 FM. Well, anytime you happen to be busy and you miss out on your favorite shows right here on Joy FM, here's what you can do. Log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash podcast. Just go on there and you'll find all your shows on demand 24-7. There you can catch up. Remember, Joy FM remains your radio for discerning listeners. Welcome back to the polls. Now, Santa Hino said to the second is requesting the establishment of the monitoring team to ensure judicial use of stool lands uh, revenue. 55% of the accounts accrued to stool land revenue is allocated to the district assemblies for development. As Santa Hino believes, there's need for the public to have full details of the use of revenue to ensure development. Now, now Jima was at the 25th anniversary celebration of the Office of Administration for Stool Lands, and he has filed this report. By law, 55% of revenue collected in stool lands is allocated to metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies for development. 25% of the allocation is given to stools, while the traditional authority gets 20% and the Office of Administrator of Stool Lands maintains 10% as administrative charge. Chief of Domiabra Asante Achim, Bafo Ousu Bediakun, represented the Asante Hene at the event. They owe it a duty to account to Nanano and our subjects the judicious utilization of our revenues. Unfortunately, our people mistakenly demand accountability from Nanano when indeed clause 6 of Article 267 of the 1992 Constitution enjoins Nanano to use their stool shares of the revenue for the maintenance of the stool in keeping with its status. There is the need to fasten up monitoring and evaluation team comprising the OASL, the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources and the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development with respect to the use of these revenues by the MMDAs. President of the National House of Chiefs says the MMDAs have failed to utilize their share of the fund to benefit their areas. Ojehoho Yaojebi explains. My second observation is the completion of developmental projects by MMDAs. We congratulate them, but let me also take this opportunity to warn those who use the money to collect garbage, who should cease from using the money to collect garbage. Because garbage, once it is taken, it is very difficult to go back to account for the quantity that was taken. And that is where the leakage is. Meanwhile, illegal mining in parts of the country is negatively impacting stool land revenue. The destruction of lands in the quest to mine for gold has rendered them useless. There are therefore no occupants to fulfill traditional obligations in ground rent. Minister for Lands and Natural Resources Samuel Abujinapo explains the success of the war against illegal mining will increase revenue accrued through two lands. Already we are dealing with illegal mining which in some parts of the country have destroyed stool lands and negatively impacted on stool land revenue. I will crave the indulgence of Nananum 
to continue to work with us in the fighting against this canker. We are also pursuing an aggressive afforestation scheme, which will, ski, which will see to the reclamation of some degraded stool lands to make them economically viable. The Office for Stool Lands have reiterated their preparedness to work with stakeholders in the improvement of collection and use of stool land revenue. Mame Ama Edumaze Aqua is administrator. The Office of Administrator of Stool Lands consults with schools and stools and skins and other traditional authorities in all matters relating to the administration and development of stool lands and makes available to them all relevant information and data. Similarly, the office coordinates with all relevant public agencies and traditional authorities and schools in preparing policy framework for the rational and productive development and management of school lands. For Joy News, Nanae Aojima Kumasi. An assessment by the National Disaster Management Organization has established that 1,000 people have been affected by the recent floods in the Shanti region this week. At least 1,000 households have been identified to have suffered some form of damage during the floods. It's been days, but victims are still putting up in mosques and other makeshift structures and say they have lost unspecified amounts of money, personal belongings, among others. Let's take you live now to Kumasi and speak to Ohiming Teria, who's been on the tour with NADMO officials. Ohiming, what's the extent of damage? Thank you, Aisha. The situation in these areas are very dire for especially the victims and other residents who may want to enter these communities. A majority of the victims have been displaced and now have been forced to put up in mosque as they continue to you know, attempt to clean the flood waters and they are accompanying uh, mud uh, from their uh, rooms. It's been difficult uh, moments uh, for some of them. Uh, some of the land uh, owners are yet to come to terms with what has befallen them, uh, taking into consideration the investments that they have put into uh, their uh, houses uh, to the extent that some of them have also uh, lost unspecified amount of money on top of losing their personal belongings. Uh, one of them is Ajia uh, Saadia Alassan, uh, who broke down in my interaction with her to understand how she and the other uh, residents around uh, have been affected. Or him interior, uh, we would get that sound bite and play for you, um, uh, and so you can have a feel of exactly what Oheming has been talking about. But Oheming, uh, uh, definitely, uh, not what has uh, not more officials been saying about this whole thing? Well, they, are, they have already assessed over 100 uh, houses in each household. Uh, we are told not less than 10 people uh, live in each household. Uh, so far, they have estimated about 1,000 people uh, being affected in Tuesday's uh, flood. Uh, what it means is that NADMO will have to complete uh, the assessment at the district and the victims. Uh, so uh, for now, NADMO officials have been very, very busy in their Supreme for municipality, for instance. Uh, and the director of operations for NADMO, Alaji Pfizer, uh, believes that if you look at the extent of uh, damage caused by the flood waters, it will take several days uh, for uh, the victims uh, to recover. Uh, for now, he's not promising any uh, form of support, but he says until they are done with the assessment, they will be able to uh, come to the aid of the victims. Uh, so he's also proposing that the assembly, that is a local uh, assembly, should make efforts uh, to sort of uh, dredge uh, the suicide stream uh, so that it can accommodate more water than the water, you know, entering uh, people's uh, homes. Uh, we can take a listen to a large Pfizer as well to get those uh, sounds for you what uh, can you say of the victims themselves how are they coping it's been very very difficult uh, for the victims 
uh, majority of them, as I said earlier, are putting up a mosque. Uh, so for now, they, they, are, they are unable to inhabit uh, their rooms, and they've been forced uh, to put up in a mosque. And then in the daytime, they come back to their uh, homes in an attempt to salvage uh, some of the personal belongings that have been lost uh, to their flats. And it's been very, very difficult for them. Uh, they, uh, they've made a, a passionate appeal to government uh, to come to their aid. Uh, some say, yes, this is an area that they have lived since 1992. And if you look at uh, the topography of the area, they've never experienced uh, a mag magnitude of uh, uh, the floods they experienced on Tuesday. And so they believe that something can be done. And if something can be done, then it could be in the form of uh, dredging the sunshine stream, which will have flown its banks, you know, pushing the water into uh, people's homes. And this could be only be done uh, by the, the local assembly on behalf of government. So they've made passionate appeal to government uh, to extend support to them. And majority of the people I spoke to complained of a uh, loss of uh, personal belongings and unspecified amount of money. Some in some instances, uh, foreign currencies. Uh, so losing your personal belongings and at the same time also uh, losing money that could have come in handy to prepare you uh, for the days ahead is what actually, you know, makes some of them break down. Even in my conversation with them, they are yet to come to terms with the loss that have befallen them. Um, we've had issues of uh, not mo mostly not reaching out to all the victims. Sometimes they they reach out to some of them, and then at the end of the day, uh, some of them will say they they, they didn't get anything from Nadmo. So how is Nadmo responding to this appeal from the victims? Yes, like I said earlier, Nadmo officials themselves were in the community. We've met them in the community as they move from a house to house, collating information and assessing the situation in that regard. So for NADMU, they wouldn't want to promise anything now because in the first place, they are not done with the assessment. Even if you take the Asakoremampo municipality, for instance, they say over 100 houses have been affected. And with 100 houses, they've managed, over 100 houses, they've managed to cover only 80. Uh, so it will take some days for NADMO to even complete the assessment. And in the Kumasi uh, metropolitan area, for instance, NADMO officials have also been working, uh, just that we didn't meet them on the field. Uh, earlier on, the regional NADMO uh, coordinator uh, you know, hinted that they are waiting for all the districts and the municipal uh, NADMO offi uh, offices uh, to collate information on the uh, flooding once they submit this uh, report to his outfit, then he will be able to uh, forward it uh, to the National and NADMO office uh, before any assistance uh, could reach uh, these uh, victims. Uh, so it is early days yet uh, for NADMO to be even be talking about what to be done to save the situation. They say unless they are done with the assessment, they can't help the people. And the people themselves are already you know, uh, devastated because they've lost their personal belongings. They don't have a place to put their head on. And now they are also being forced to move from their, you know, uh, abode to a mosque where they are currently uh, occupying. So it's a big difficult uh, situation for the victims uh, in last uh, I am in Syria. It's our man in Kumasi monitoring this uh, flood victims and uh, the damage that the flood has caused to these people. We're still in Kumasi because traders at the Kijitia market in Kumasi have agreed to start payments of accrued electricity uh, over there. Let's take a break on the pulse. We'll bring you details shortly. Hi, this is Lexus Bill, host of Drive Time on Joy 99.7 FM. Listen, you don't have to worry if you miss Drive Time or personality profile. It's going to be live on our podcast page. Just log on to www.myjoyonline.com forward slash podcast. You can listen to Drive Time, personality profile and any other of your favorite shows on Joy FM on that page. You don't have to miss a show at all. 
Joy 99.7 FM Radio for discerning listeners. Welcome back to The Pulse. We can now uh, talk about traders at KJTR Market in Kumase who have agreed to start payments of accrued electricity bills. The traders have a defaulted payment of 2.1 million cities in electricity bills for five months in process against their inability to access separate meters. An intervention by the Kumase mayor, Samuel uh, uh, Pine, uh, saved the situation. There's more in the following Night ago, the ECG cut power at the KGTR market. For close to six hours, businesses were at standstill. Their traders maintained without separate meters, they will not pay the accumulated debt. After meeting the Kumasi mayor, the traders have agreed to start payments of debt owed to ECG, including other service charges. Operations manager of KGTR Traders Association, Ahmed Kwaten, says some pines action clearly indicates he is on their side hence their decision to start payments of accumulated debts because we want to thank Honorable Sampine because we know that soon he's going to sign the contract. We are not saying we will not pay the debt. We will pay if each trader gets their own meter. Kumasi Maya says there are ongoing arrangements to get separate meters installed at the shops. Yeah, we've met with the stakeholders. Um, I had discussions with the electricity company of Ghana on the roadmap to how we can settle the debts um, or the indebtedness of um, the tenants in quote. I mean those who are working at the KGT market to the um, ECG. Um, we also made them know that yes, it's important to adhere to whatever discussions that we've had and therefore we've given them up to about Tuesday that yesterday, today, tomorrow, Monday the letter that they will collect, we will take that as basis for drawing um, a payment or making a payment plan for, for them. And again, we are also working with um, the contractors, those who put in their bid. Um, the electricity company of Ghana, experts from there have tested their meters, they've done a um, background check of, I mean, due diligence on these companies and we've been assured that they can effectively execute that project. And from Kumasi, let's move to Cape Coast because President Ekofuado this week has not enjoyed friendship from people of the central region. His comments denying that he or his party ever promised to build a harbor in the region has infuriated the youth who had hoped that for the first time something significant was going to happen that could change the fortunes of the people there. Well, they got an apology which they say is unwanted. Let's get to understand how crucial the construction of a harbor there would really mean to them. In the studio with me is Abeku Adams. He's a youth uh, from the central region and he's part of the region's youth who led the campaign to demand the construction of the harbor and other infrastructure to improve the economy of the central region. Uh, how are you, uh, Abeku? I'm good, Aisha. Uh, good to see you again. See you so tell us about, I mean, how this whole thing started. Oh, well, it started from around 2011 when a number of young people in Cape Coast realized that the city does not have a voice speaking for its development and on the issues that are confronting the people of Cape Coast. So we had a series of meetings and there were a series of programs that were rolled out trying to have uh, self-initiatives that would help Cape Coast. Then it got to a point that it became very critical to engage central government. So in 2016, when the election was about being organized, we said, oh, let's, it's time to hit hard and get the attention that the city deserves. So 
So we had uh, no airport, no vote uh, demonstration, which was massively participated by the people of Cape Coast, not in South uh, the constituencies within the whole metropolis. And 2020, when the government was about um, launching its manifesto for the second bid, mm -hmm. uh, the party categorically accepted that we had a good case for uh, asking for the airport for Cape Coast. And they agreed to give us airport and uh, air, uh, harbor at the same time. And you must, uh, I must emphasize that Cape Coast is the regional capital of Central Region. So we use Cape Coast to represent the whole of Central Region. Mm. So whatever we are asking for is for the good of Central Region. The region is, is sinking into abject poverty. Mm. And I live within that context. I ex experience it and I know what is happening. So that was the genesis of the whole discourse that we have today. Okay, but how much of uh, importance or how important is the construction of um, this particular harbour you talk about to the region? You understand, uh, commerce has been the central fulcrum of development all through human civilization. Mm. And we are asking for this because it is, these two are central to commercial activities. And Cape Coast history is tied strongly to international commerce. So it is the genesis of Cape Coast itself. It is true commerce. And the airport and the harbor are very central. They're going to open up Cape Coast for international commerce, and they're going, they're going to create a lot of empl uh, employment for us. Then again, too, the highway from Accra to Takradi through Cape Coast is an international highway that uh, other landlocked African countries are using. So we need it to be expanded. We need dual carriage road, at least three on each side. And we think that getting an airport or harbor makes it imperative for central government to prioritize that part of our city for us. Mm. Because it's going to open up a whole stretch of central region from Kaswa through Ekunfi to Cape Coast. So it's very critical to us uh, as people of the region. But uh, the, the president explained to you why you can't have um, the harbor anymore and he explains and uh, this is exactly what the president says he says let me confess I made a mistake on uh, on the Cape Coast matter even with the mistake we have to have a rethink we cannot have a harbor at Takradi Elmina and have another one at Cape Coast that's isn't a, this genuine that's a, that's a moot, a moot uh, excuse or argument because mm. uh, we have international harbor in Takradi they went ahead to have a fishing harbor in Takradi. Okay. They have about two of them, major one and a small, small one. Mm. Then again, we have uh, Tema Harbor, which is international harbor, and they have Jamestown fishing harbor ongoing. So we can have two harbors at the same time. And the distance between Cape Coast and Takradi is vast. And you're, you're not dealing with distance here. You're dealing with volume, increasing the volume of trade Ghana has with the extent the outside world. So we should look, it, look at it beyond Cape Coast asking for it. Mm. We should look at it within the context of Ghana's development, trying to expand trade. And this, that has been the concern of many, many nations around the world from <laughs> Stone Age time to now. Increased trade volume. And if you go to the Caribbean island, that's when you see the closeness of harbors to each other. It's all about maximizing the profit that trade will come with. Mm. And Cape Coast is well positioned to be able to benefit from such a project. Then again, too, if you are, the people of Cape Coast are asking for harbor, and central government is the chief spender of the state, uh, nothing stops the government to have engaged us initially on these reasonable terms. Let's discuss it. You don't play on it to gain vote in the region, then come back again and take a unilateral decision that, oh, after all, it is not uh, viable, it's not reasonable to have it. That, that's, that's a a slap in, 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 in the face, you mm. understand? So that's is, what is it the, constru the harbor that you are not going to have that bothers you, or it's the U-turn that the president made that is your problem? It's a, it's a contradiction, the, mm. the degree of dishonesty of mm. government and that lack of intentionality moving the nation forward. Mm. Because it seems like there, it's not in their scheme of plan. Yet again, yet, yet they went ahead to subscribe to it to the 2020 election, mm. and I don't want to take a U-turn. Okay. Yes, not having the harbor itself is a great concern to the people of Cape Coast and Central Region. Mm. So, and that's the general. That's why I had to travel this dawn to come to Accra just for this encounter. Mm. It is very, very much important, and the whole. 
posture of government around it is disappointing to the people of Cape Coast. No, of course, but as it stands now, it doesn't look like a project that will enjoy the attention of government because the president has told you point blank is something that uh, we should rethink because we can't have one in Elmina, one in, uh, uh, I mean, two in those areas and then still have another one in Cape Coast. What do you intend to do about that? That's a reasonable, uh, what do you call it, a doubt you have because mm. uh, the government has proven itself to be not uh, a man of, or the people have not proven themselves to be people of their word. Then again, yes, we are asking for harbour. The initial stage would have been to discuss with that what, what are we conceptualizing as harbour? Mm. Is it an international trade harbour or a fishing harbour? Now, let's distinguish London sites and fishing harbour from, from, from yeah, each other. You know, yeah. London site is just a mere opening on the beach for the people to, to land and do their commercial activities. If you come to Central Region right now, from Anamabu up to Amina, the whole stretch of the beach has been destroyed by sea defense they are doing. And they didn't factor the people's economic livelihood into the whole project. So mm. they started dropping rocks on the beach, mm. interrupting the normal economic activities of the fishermen, where their canoes were, were landing, were all destroyed. Mm. It is now that they've realized that they, they should have factored it into their whole scheme and created a space. If you come to Cape Coast, the fishermen had to protest because they wanted to close around the castle where they land. They wanted to close with the rocks. They had to protest. Then they, it forced them to jump to the other side of the castle to continue. How do you, how do you develop a country like that without interacting with the people? Mm. In fact, our Cape Coast of mine here, I'm, I'm well informed, wasn't even aware formally mm. about the project when it was about commencing. Mm. That's a disconnection between the people, with the people that we of Cape Coast are grieved about. Mm. We need the airport, we need the airport, we need the harbor. Let's come and just come forward and let's discuss. Do you, are you ready to build us a fashion harbor? A refreshing harbor. We're not talking about London site like we have in Amina. What we have in Amina is not a fishing harbor. We know what Ghana Port and Harbors authorities have. The description of fishing harbor is on our website. It is clear. Mm. It's a whole ecosystem of economic reengineering. And our lagoon, Fosu Lagoon, is an excellent facility for that project. 2016, Imani Ghana did a whole pro uh, investigation or research, and they came out that even at the time that they were doing their research, if that play, that lagoon is, was utilized as a fishing harbor, it could rake in 14.4 4 million annually mm. for government. Why are we sitting down? And sign, hydro, sign, uh, sign, what the Dutch Chinese companies were interested in financing it if government had shown interest. We need people to show interest in Cape Coast. We mm. need a voice. We need mm. central government to be very much interested in Cape Coast development. Mm. So what's next for you? Because definitely this request has been shut down by government. We are very democratic people. Uh, Politics, the history of politics in Ghana started in Gold Coast, Cape, mm. uh, Cape Coast. Mm. So we understand, we are informed by the history of this country and the politics of it. And we are going to resort to democratic means of getting either this government or whichever government that comes mm. to pay particular attention to Cape mm. Coast and Central Region. Which is? And so next month we are, we are having a second phase of the demonstration, a massive one uh, across Cape Coast. And it's going to, be, it's going, it's going to go on record mm. in the history of this country. Mm. because. It is, a, it is, it, we have been taken for granted. Cape Coast has been taken for granted by politicians, certain politicians, both NDC and MPP, they have taken us for granted mm. and will not let it go this time around. They've taken you for granted? Yeah. Are you saying that there hasn't been any major development in Cape Coast, I mean, in, over a period of Thank time? Thank you for qualifying it major. Mm. Uh, if I say, if I only left it with the development, that would have, would have let me hang it. There has not been any major development in Cape Coast. Major in the sense mm. that a development that directly impact a large chunk of Cape Coast life, mm. that revolutionize, that create rippling economic effect on the mm. people. Mm. It has never happened. Okay. The only development we have in Cape Coast is the market we, they built. Mm. And I tell you, the market itself, the distribution itself was, a, was an issue in Cape Coast. The politicians scrambled for it to the detriment of the so-called ordinary Ghanaians who needed uh, them most. So it's a whole... Uh, complex situation. Cape Coast is lacking behind, big time.
Mm. Yep. I'm grateful for your time. Abe Adams is a youth in Central Region concerned about the construction of harbour in uh, the in Cape Coast. You you recall uh, what the president said this week, uh, making it almost feel like a U turn from what they promised in their manifesto. Well, but the president has apologized, but the youth say they do not accept this apology and that they will go all out to demand that government fulfills this promise. Now, Greater Accra Regional Minister is speaking at the launch of the Clean Your Frontage Bylaw. Let's take you live there. Both yam and tomato sellers. Phase three will involve moving in coats, what we know as Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah settlers. We intend to move all bug breaking businesses to other places within and outside the CBD. As part of fulfilling the requests by Abosu Current Spare Part Dealers Association, the RCC is engaging the association to relocate to Afienya under the industrial enclave and urban renewable projects. And on behalf of the association, the RCC, through the Lands Commission, has requested for the allocation of a thousand acres of land which will be developed into an automobile hub. Going forward then, automobile services and other marketing value chain will be restricted to the automobile hub. We have cleared traders on the streets along the Medina Zungo Junction to ensure free flow of traffic and urban mobility. We have also saved lives by assisting pedestrians to utilize the overheads. We have also cleared trailers from the median along the Kwame Nkrumah Avenue to facilitate greening of the median and enhance flow of traffic. We have cleared scrap dealers from the back of Bayer Manco store to reduce silting on the major odor drains and allow MS breadmasters to carry on with their work. We have moved the computer waste dealers from Nagbukloshi Enclave. It will be recorded that their concentration in Ghana, the enviable accolade in Wikipedia, as the dirtiest and most toxic enclave in the world. I would like to take this opportunity to call on the relevant agencies to take steps to apply to Wikipedia to revise the notes on Nagbukloshi. As a president, it is not by accident that Accra has not suffered any serious flooding, even though the recent heavy downpours, but it is rather by the cumulative effects of deliberate interventions led by your good self. The next major intervention that we plan to tackle is in the area of sanitation, which we have christened. Ladies and gentlemen, that Mr. President, will very soon ask the operation clean your frontage. It is said that cleanliness is next to godliness. Statistics also shows that Ghanaians are largely educated, exposed, and mainly religious. Hence, cleanliness should not pose much challenge to the majority of Ghanaians at all. Again, considering that sanitation and cleanliness is related to health, it is imperative that this is tackled with all the seriousness to resolve various health challenges. It is in this vein that the Regional Coordinating Council is launching the, is uh, being assisted by the President of the Republic of Ghana to launch the operation clean your frontage agenda. The necessary bylaws, Mrs. President, have been passed by all the 29 MMDs. And the President, I must put on record that during the consultations and engagements, all the 34 parliamentary or members of parliament of the Greater Accra region once again sat through and looked at the clauses one by one. 
This is a matter of greater Accra, Ga Adnangbe. There is no politics in this. The Regional Coordinating Council has proved them, and the bylaws have duly been gazetted. The grievance of the bylaw is that every house owner, respecting the president, I uh, repeats, every house owner, occupier, trader, a business and institutions has a responsibility to ensure that their, the frontage of their premises are indeed, they are, and indeed their immediate surroundings are clean. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the process of recruiting over 3,500 youth and the present just a few are uh, what you see before you, who will be undergoing training to form the city response team, just like in the city guards, to help in the implementation and policing of the agenda. Indeed, all members of team have been drawn and deployed from the various MMBs. Thus, the RCC is generating employment for the teaming youth of Ghana. These officers will be trained and properly structured under the supervisors who will be retired military officers. They will be given the required resources to deliver and we expect them to exhibit normal military discipline in all their activities. The city response team will police every vicinity and major intersections in a car. Distinguished invited guests, we are putting up concrete waste beams along all major roads in the city. We are piloting this along the major roads in the city, starting from Ayimensa to Novotel and KIPC to the Independence Square. All the beams will be lined and sanitation service providers are expected to regularly dislodge the beams. Is collaborating with the RCC together with the other waste management companies to provide these beams. They will also provide 58, the President just saw some of them, compactors for which every MMD gets at least one. The more populated and expansive ones will get more. Messiah Zoom Lion will provide over 1,000 containerized tricycles, tricycles for all MMDAs. All the tricycles will be registered by BVLA, giving special identification numbers, embossed with a logo of the relevant MMDA, and made to work within a particular MMDA. In addition, transfer stations are to be established in all MMDAs, which should facilitate expeditious waste collection and disposal. Assemblies that are yet to submit their locations must do so without fail by close of next week. Commercial vehicles will be expected to provide beans in their vehicles to stop passengers from throwing rubbish out of the windows. Rubbish collection in Accra is going digital. We have established, or rather we will establish call centers with three two lines to receive calls, complaints from sanitation informants. Indeed, we are engaging the Attorney General to find a way to include community services and the sentencing regime to ensure that we do not congest the courts with sanitation issues. We are offering two months, or rather three months, moratorium for public education and mass sensitization after the project launch. Full operations, therefore, takes effect by the 1st of February 2022. Mr. President, we are making concerted efforts to green and to beautify Accra. The Regional Coordinating Council is partnering Masses Moulin Law and Jandel Parks and Zandel Parks and Gardens, Forestry Commission, 
Forestry Commission, sorry, and the Regional Coordinating Council for the greening and beautification of open and public spaces within the city. We are starting with the major streets and roundabouts as iconic areas in Accra. Some of these are from Ayimensa to reach runabouts to the back of Nobotel. From Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center to Accra Sports Stadium, Independence Square, AU Runabout, Rich Runabout, Dankwa Circle, Akufuado Runabout, etc., etc. Ladies and gentlemen, tricycles are causing a lot of nuisance on our highways. And in furtherance of the motor traffic regulations, LI 2180, and in line with our strategy, all tricycles, popularly known as Aboboya, will be restricted from using the major roads, highways, and principal streets in Accra. They will be expected to operate within their registered MMDs. However, tricycles, However, next week we will be announcing measures to deal with that menace on the motorway. Mr. President, in furtherance of the motor traffic regulations, the following is directed. Whilst we wait for the two months moratorium, all unlicensed motorbikes will not be allowed to operate within the city and police are already handling that for us. All riders and parallel riders should wear helmets, protected gears. No motorcycle should carry more than two riders. This is expected to reduce the robbery menace with motorcycles in the city. Finally, as a president, Abiyasuma, Niga, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my fervent hope that at the end of the day we will have a cleaner Accra and healthier residents. Enforcement of law and order, decongested streets with better traffic flow, traders selling at designated places, and the more disciplined residents. In addition, in addition, businesses, investments, and tourism will thrive. Once again, Mr. President, let me use the opportunity to thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve the good people of Greater Accra. God bless us all. The Honorable Henry Quartz, Greater Accra Regional Minister, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause. Regional Minister Henry Corte, um, proud to the launching of the Operation Clean Your Frontage, uh, which will be done shortly by President Echo Fuado. And he's been sending some signals and warnings to people who would refuse to keep their frontage clean. He says, if you own the house, you are responsible for doing that. Once this bylaw is launched, you will be caught up, and the sanction regime is quite severe. So, President Echo will be taking uh, the stage very soon and will take you live back to the Independence Square for you to have a feel of what the president uh, will be saying. Well, let's go back to the Independence Square because President Kufuado is about to launch that law. Metropolitan Municipal District Chief Executives members of parliament, the members of parliament select committees, Niger, King, Teku, Takichu, the second, Nime, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen, Today is a very good day in the life of Accra. For the first time in 20 years, the President of the Republic 
was able to go and visit the lawfully installed official gazetted government chair in his palace in Kanishi. We thank God for that development, that at long last, all the squabbles and disputes about who should succeed Mia Mugi have come to an end, and that we have this fine young man as the new Gamma chair. Call on everybody in Accra, especially the chiefs of Accra, Members of Parliament in Accra, Municipal, Metropolitan, Metropolitan, Municipal, and District Chief Executives of the Greater Accra Region, opinion leaders, all the citizenry, to give him the maximum support so that his reign is successful and he helps bring peace and prosperity to greater Accra. On this same day, I have the great honor to come and launch Operation Clean Your Frontiers. I was born in Accra, not far from here, in Swalaba. I grew up in Kolewoko and in Adabraka and finally in Lima. To me, I'm an Accra boy. When we were growing up and in independence, Accra was a city of 250,000 people and our nation, Ghana, was a nation of six million people. Today, according to the latest census, we have 30 million 800,000 in Ghana, five times what we were at independence. And Accra is a city of some five million people. Those statistics alone tell you the challenge we have about utilities, services, and sanitation in our capital city. A challenge which can only be overcome, not just by the logistics and the bylaws and the rules of engagement, but also by a change in our attitude and behavior. That is why I said at the beginning of my first mandate, it was my determination that by the end of my period as president, Accra would be the cleanest city in Africa. What we are doing today the launching of Operation Clean Your Frontage is a, a, an essential step to making that commitment about Accra being the cleanest city in Africa become real. You've heard from the ministers, especially from the regional minister, all the various measures that have been put in place, including the logistical resources that have been assembled. And we have heard also of the coalition of all different sections of our community, both in the public and private sectors, about the cooperation that they are going to have to show in order for us to make Operation Clean Your Frontage a success. And a success it must be. I want to pay tribute to all of those who have worked hard to make this day possible.
regional minister his assistance in the local government system the collaborating ministers and ministries the private sector operators led by that extraordinary Ghanaian businessman Joseph Sian Ajipo, Executive Chairman of Zoom Lion Limited. The members of Parliament on both sides of the political divide have come together in an unprecedented manner here in Accra. I'm sharing the same platform with my good friend Neil Ante van der Poel and others to make this day possible. All of you. Aiko. So with those words, and with a call to the Almighty God to bless our enterprise, I have the great pleasure, the great honor in launching Operation Clean Your Frontage. May God bless us all and our homeland Ghana make us great and small. Thank you. President of the Republic, Nana Adudankwa Akufuado. Ladies and gentlemen, a resounding round of applause. We thank you, Mr. President, for all you call on us to do. We shall do the needful and make you proud. The greatest beneficiaries of this project, ladies and gentlemen, are the good people of Accra. Mr. President, Honorable Ministers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, if it pleases you, allow me to grant the last words for this afternoon, to the king of this great city, ladies and gentlemen, His Royal Majesty, King Taki Tekotru, the second Ga Manche. And that was President Kofuadu launching the bylaws that will ensure, it's called Operations Clean Your Front, and it will ensure that if you don't clean your frontage, you will have the law to faith. And uh, President Kofuadu uh, has been saying that by the end of his tenure, Accra will be the cleanest city in West Africa. He's been urging the assemblies in particular to make this bylaw work. He's also been calling on the Member of Parliament for Dudu Diu Diu, Neil Ante Van der Poy, and other stakeholders to ensure that this law is executed and enforced to the fullest and ensure that the purpose for which it was uh, launched will be benefited. And he says the people of Accra, who are the biggest beneficiaries of this bylaw, must also cooperate and ensure that this work. We'll take a break on the pulse. We'll bring you the very latest from the world of sports. Hi, this is Lexus Bill, host of Drive Time on Joy 99.7 FM. Listen, you don't have to worry if you miss Drive Time or personality profile. It's going to be live on our podcast page. Just log on to www.myjoyonline.com forward slash podcast you can listen to drive time personality profile and any other of your favorite shows on joy fm on that page you don't have to miss a show at all joy 99.7 fm radio for discerning listeners Hello there, Hans Benzando here with the sport on the pulse. Accra had to focus. They are one step away from reaching the money zone of the CAF Champions League as they clash with Bidad Atletico Casablanca of Morocco in the second leg um, of the playoffs. Hats have a 1 0 advantage going to Sunday's game. Can the Phobians qualify at the expense of the Moroccan side? Let's speak to Kobe Jones, who's a public relations officer of the National Chapters Committee of Accra Heart of Oak. Now, Kobe, thank you very much for joining me. It's um, a North African side, um, maybe a win away from qualifying to the money zone. No fans whatsoever in the stadium. How worried are you? Thank you very much, Hans. Um, I shouldn't say we are worried. Um, I should say that it's a blessing in disguise because mm. um, anybody who knows the North Africans, 
and their supporters and how they support their team. We will certainly um, attest to the fact that uh, we are playing behind closed doors a blessing for us because um, the North Africans, have, they have huge stadiums as compared to what we have here. And uh, judging from our team, the fact that most of our players have not played in the African club competition, they've not, um, met, they've not met this challenge before. I mean, I think the best thing for us to, behind, to play behind closed doors. In that case, they will not experience the harassment, the chanting, and the, the, the burning of, um, or lightening of that, the yeah, red light and everything um, of the North Africans. So I think it's good for us. And, and we are happy for that. Now, whatever our crowds of folk are involved in the continental competition, the reference always is with the year 2000. I mean, um, does this team invoke memories of that 64 battalion team? The only difference between this team and the 64 battalions is that the 64 battalions, um, in, on their way to conquer Africa, um, consecutively have played in Africa for about well, three, four years. Uh, they had enormous experience, they knew the Africans, they knew their tactics, they knew how to play them. But this team have not tasted that, they don't have that experience. But this is a, these are boys who are very determined, um, very cohesive, play for each other, and they are willing to make history for themselves, willing to um, play, explode at the highest level, and, and I think that is what they are doing. You remember... And our first game, nobody gave our team a dog chance. Nobody thought that we could play um, whack of Morocco the way we play them here, uh, simply because with the enormous experience, of course, their league is in progress. They played five matches, they've not lost. And um, a lot of people were thinking that they will run over us. But the boys were very determined, played very well. And um, if, for me, if not the, the officiating that they didn't, it was not fair for us, we would have won that match by two or three goes to nothing. So um, that is the difference. So, I mean, the zeal and the telepathic understanding and uh, what boy, these boys think is in store for them, that is propelling them and that is um, um, spurring them on. So I think it has a similarity. The only difference is that they don't have that enormous experience that a city for Bacillian had. Mm. Now, there is also the sense that how to folk keep this team or this group of players together for maybe the next two seasons and we are looking at real contenders for a continental trophy. On your part, as far as fans, have you placed any demand or do you intend to place a demand on management to ensure that this team is kept together? That is a very Herculean tax for management. It's a very big tax, like I said, for them. But these boys are doing well day in, day out playing, improving in every match. They have a very good coach. And, of course, there are scouts around. They will be scouting them. They want them to go and play for them, of course. You know, when it comes to the commercial aspect of the game, we are not up to those who have the financial muscles. So when they come in with that huge money to prize your player out, it's difficult for you to keep that player. So that is a big challenge for our management. But, of course, our board chairman... Um, the way I said at the 14th, the Royal Nets has always said that um, he wants House of Hope players to play for House of Hope. And even if they will leave, uh, maybe they will leave to Europe. I don't know whether we can keep them. That is a very Herculean one. But I think that if you're able to keep them for two year two or three, it will be difficult for any team to play us here in Accra or in, in the Ghana League, especially the local um, 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 teams that we have. And even... Apart from that, in, on, on the continent, it will be a, re a force to reckon it. And maybe that will reminisce the 64 battalions that they're all conquering African team that qualify for the first um, World Club Championship that you mentioned. So um, our hope as supporters is for the, um, the board, the management to keep this team for us. And I'm sure it's Royal and it's the Graf the 14th. He's done tremendously well. He's done so many, so many so many things for this club. The direction that is moving this club to, I'm hoping that we could keep these players for us. I'm grateful that you could join me. Kobe Jones um, is a supporters leader for Accra Heart of Folk speaking to us here on the post. We'll keep monitoring the Phobians as they journey on in the hopes of uh, continuing their quest for continental glory all the way 
in Morocco. In the meantime, you can read more sports at myjoyonline.com forward slash sports. I am Hans Mensando. Many thanks for your time. Hello, my name is Evans Mensa, and you can relive all the fun and excitement on Top Story, News Night, and of course, Ghana Connect via podcast. All you need to do is to log on to my joy online slash podcast. Set for your favorite show and relive the moment. Joy 99.7 FM, your radio for designing listeners. Talk showbiz. It's time now for showbiz on the pulse. Three Guardian celebrities behind bars in less than a week. The latest to face the law is rapper Medical, known in private life as Samuel Edufrimpo, who has been remanded in police custody for five days for brandishing a gun on social media. You should tell where the energy is coming from right now. My Peter Civini is here, the <laughs> industry player. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm all right. Uh, she was in court today for Joy News. Uh, what really transpired in court today, Matito? All right. So I started at the Accra Regional Headquarters. I was there for an hour waiting to hear where which court medical would be taken to. And it seemed like there was a back and forth. After an hour, he was then released. We went to uh, the Accra Circuit Court. When we got there, we waited about an hour because they were still trying to decide which court was going to handle the case. Mm. All right, so now let's talk about his charge. So he was charged with an unlawful display mm. of uh, arms and ammunition. Okay. And now he is uh, to spend five days in prison custody. So he's rem remanded uh, for five days. So he's going to spend that in Ankafo, which is in the central region. Too and bad. Yeah, too bad. And uh, Shatawale is also in the same uh, prison. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe they will do a collab <laughs> for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, a lot of people on Twitter uh, say that um, there might be a concert at Ankafo uh -huh. uh, prison tonight or tomorrow. Uh, Shatawale headlining you need a alongside... Ticket. <laughs> you need a ticket. So your your ticket concert. is to commit a crime. <laughs> commit a crime and uh, the IGP will gladly take you there. And you can yeah. have and a you can, feel. Uh, because you need to pay a lot of money towards <laughs> these two people. Exactly. I mean, when they are performing, yeah. now you have them free of charge. You have them free of charge. Just commit a crime <laughs> and try them, party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, uh, Fela Makafui was there. Okay. And uh, the, who's the wife? And she's an actress. And if you're looking at, because I was there yesterday when Shatawale was sent to court, mm. and you're looking at the atmosphere today when medical was sent to court, it was totally different. different. Yeah. Okay. So medical, it was just the wife, the mother, and his boys. You so didn't his see the huge crowd that mm. greeted yeah, uh, yesterday's um, mm -hmm. proceedings in court. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So it was calm. It was just his boys his wife and his mother mm. and no sights no fans in sight and it was i mean it was just like a very different like ju juxtaposition of shatawale's free shatawale free shatawale chanting and also silence for medical mm. and that's why it's very important to surround yourself with like uh, mm. people who always support you and protect you in everything that you do because on your screens right now is medical's boys mm. right and mm. they have surrounded him so they've created a human fence around him okay. and they have covered his arms that were or his hands that were handcuffed mm. with a cloth so that mm. the media doesn't get a hold of that yeah yeah so they were just trying to protect his image as much as possible mm. which i think for this is something medical should like watch out for like yeah that. these are people who have my back mm -hmm. yeah people mm -hmm. who are with uh, me. but yeah. it's so sad because i'm told he had a show with kevin boy yeah but that has been cancelled i'm told uh, kevin boy posted that on social media yeah so on twitter kevin boy uh, posted that uh, unfortunately that uh, concert mm. will be um, will not come will on. not come on and the concert was supposed to be in Sinyani, like you rightly said so unfortunately it won't come on it won't come yeah. on what are people saying on on twitter so people on twitter hashtag free shatawale is still trending mm. uh people are still wants the release of the shatter uh, the king of shatter movement mm. uh we'll get those tweets on your screens mm. but i mean it's been a tough week for Music, for the entertainment I mean, industry. For the yeah. inter I think, um, do we have any updates on, on Funny Face as well? Funny Face was um, suggested that he should 
be taken to a psychiatric hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's been taken to the psychiatric hospital. So currently he's Correct. still at the psychiatric yes. hospital. So, so uh, mm -hmm. he himself admits that he has some challenges yes. up there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So 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 that's a funny face. Uh, he's uh, and going, currently going under evaluation, medical and Shatawale, uh, medical for five days and Shatawale for seven days at the very at the Ankafo prison. Mm. Yeah, and of course, uh, medical was seen dropping a bag in the police van that transported uh, medical. I mean, Fela Makafu uh -huh. is the one who dropped that bag uh -huh. uh, the, in the van that transported medical. You saw it. Uh, what do you suspect it was? Well. Um, so medic, uh, what's this called? Fela Makafui had a sling bag, mm. and in that sling bag was a brown envelope. Okay. A brown envelope. So she was about to open the, uh, the you know, the bag, bag and, and take the envelope takes, for him. Yeah, take something out. Uh -huh. When someone next to her advised her not to do it, instead to put the handbag in it's, the car, okay. and then if she was counting something, or if she was looking for something, it's better she does it. Uh, away from uh, uh, the, the, the media. Public. Yeah, the okay. public or the media. Okay. Because uh, at that moment, a lot of cameras were surrounding her. Mm. She to herself, like on your screens right now. Yeah. Yeah. So you won't be able to see it, but like she was, she even got upset and pissed. That's, that, yeah, like Munjai, Munjai, like stop. Well, I mean, yeah. we, the, the camera people? The camera people, yeah. So, so like, Aden, Aden, why do you keep on like following me around? Yeah. Okay. So she was clearly frustrated mm. from the police. Uh, station she was frustrated and these are some of medical's uh, friends and the lawyer was also there mm, okay yeah so um, there's, there's been I know there's been series of um, um, funds uh -huh. out there uh, free Shatawale mm -hmm. free um, do we have any of like anything like that for medical right now no Okay, as, so as free Shatawale. Yeah, so like, I think it, on Twitter, it's mm. still Shatawale who is stopping now. Uh, Fela Makafu is also trending. So free MDK and then has free also MDK started MDK trending. Has, yeah. has popped up and it's also trending. Yeah. All right. So I think uh, we should can just, we read a few of yeah. the uh, messages on Twitter? Um, okay, and, mm -hmm. do that for us. All right, Max. so this is from Prince David who says, Sad scenes as rapper Medical leaves the court. Uh, premises to begin his five-day prison remand sentence. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, this is from Contractor. From Contractor who says, first, let me hail the Ghana police service for keeping crime so low in Ghana that they're arresting social media and Shatawale is a big deal. These men harm no one, so hashtag free Shatawale to live his dream and do uh, the work God puts him here for. Hashtag reggae vaccine. At Manuel Kofi says, this is not what will convince us Ghanaians that you're working at GP. Arresting Shatawale medical over flimsy issues is not the real work. Go and rather get the dangerous criminals who are robbing people on the streets of Achimota and Weisha with motorbikes. Mm. And, this and it's one, hashtag free Shatawale as well. Shatawale. From and, Kokesi, mm. uh, now dear man for day geo, I no one say free <laughs> self. Yeah. Uh, anyway, hashtag free medical. But also yesterday she, he did tweet that um, I hope they don't, the same thing they did to me, I hope they don't do to uh, Shatawale. This was yesterday. Free from Shatawale. Kwa, Kwa, from from Kwa 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 Yeah. Okay. And um, there was one there from mm -hmm. Shatawale. Ba. I, I'm so much interested in that one, okay. but it's okay. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, can we see that? All right. So this one says, how can someone be arrested for fighting for his freedom at Shatawale GH? Jade with your hashtag Free Shatawale, the world's boss. And a lot of his, um, the members of the Shata movement mm -hmm. are asking, you know, each other to please drop a motivational song from Shatawale. Let us motivate each other mm -hmm. uh, since our king is in uh, prison mm -hmm. or, uh, yeah, in, in custody. So let us motivate one another mm -hmm. and keep the spirits alive. Wow. Yeah. And uh, for me, it will be nice to hear from this uh, duo. Uh, if they do a collab from wherever, from, from they, wherever are, they are, to tell people that wherever we are, we still we still have the energy. We're yeah. still keeping it positive. Yeah. Well, I know there are a lot of other things happening in the entertainment world. What are those things? All right, as you you've probably noticed, the sun has been getting a lot hotter, mm -hmm. and that's because of climate change. And a lot of people feel like that climate change is not a real thing. But we have some uh, fashionistas and exhibitors who want to show you that f uh, climate change is a real thing, and they're trying to address it but mm -hmm. in the best way they know how to okay. and they put up a fashion show so here are the highlights <laughs> Ega 
on. Enjoy. Our idea is to use the climate clock to bring attention to the fact that climate change is happening here and now. And if we think we have time, we have only seven years to turn our deadline into a lifeline, to shift away from fossil fuel and livestock farming and bad habits to climate smart habits and make sure that we can, we can begin to use our creativity, our music and our activities to bring attention to renewable energy which is the energy of life. So that's what we've been doing so far. Has the Ghanaian populace gotten the message of the climate change? Not at all, not at all, not at all. The message is still at the stakeholder level. But that's why I'm here. I promise that I'm going to use my social media pages to bring attention to it. But you, 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 should, you should see that the conversation is still at the stakeholder level because of two things. Because even though we are teaching climate change in schools, once you are done with school, you pass, you throw it away and move on to how to find food to eat. So our leaders, with me inclusive, we have a job to do, to make sure that we put billboards in town, to put radio jingles, to do, I'm going to do the music, music videos, to bring the conversation, give it to civic education, to run the, the climate change conversation like we are protecting ourselves from COVID-19. Because I think the conversation is even far, far, far more important than COVID-19. But look at the attention that they, we put in COVID-19 and the attention that we put in climate conversation. So we need to amp it. We need to amp it. Do you think that climate change should be, uh, 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 should be part of uh, our, our, our school teaching subject? with the younger age? Well, they are already teaching it in schools. And, and when you look at the cultural see. studies books, the science books, all the books, the climate change conversation is there. Mind. But I think that we used to drive it, we used to drive it uh, with, the with the nation's force. You know, and I know that. All right, so that's uh, Ochama Kwame, who is ambassador for climate change. And let's all this weekend try to, you know, take better choices mm -hmm. in regards to our uh, fossils and... <laughs> Our oh, recycling and this thing. That's it for Let's Talk Showbiz, please. Aisha, today is Friday, baby. <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> uh, what's it then? Last week killed me. Me too. Uh, where are we going? You tell me. <laughs> you know all the credits. So Don't worry, I'll tell you. <laughs> okay, we'll have that discussion Ciao. after this. And that will be it for The Pulse. I've indeed enjoyed the two hours stay with you. And... My name is Aisha Ibrahim. For more news, log on to myjohnline.com. You'll get updates of all the developing stories.